All right, everyone, we are back, and we are thrilled to welcome Jared Tokars from the NFL Draft Insider, who, I mean, first of all, just at face value, just so happy to have him on the pod. Second of all, I heard from my co-host just a minute ago that Jared actually downloaded Skype just for us to be on this show. So, I mean, to me, that is just, you know, going above and beyond what we ask most of our guests. Thanks a lot for doing that. Thanks a lot for being here. How you doing, Jared? I'm doing well. I will be honest. I, I had Skype on my old phone, but uh, over the weekend, I got pushed into a pool and I, I just got a new <laughs> phone. So I haven't uh, downloaded all the apps. You know, when you break a new phone, you got to you got to download all 500 apps or whatever you had on there. So um, it's good to have Skype back right. on my phone. I'll say that. So but thank you, guys. You're welcome. We, we were the catalyst that made you download it right now, though. And I can't tell you how much that means. Uh, we appreciate it so much. Um, I wanted to get started. If you don't mind, we ask, I pretty much ask all the writers we have on the show uh, a kind of weird hypothetical to get started to kind of see where you're at. you mind if I throw one at you real quick? Do it. All right. So the hypothetical is follows. And the first thing uh, I need to know is what's your favorite, uh, least favorite football team? Oh, that, that's easy. Uh, definitely the Giants. Um, being from Boston, the Boston area my whole entire life. I'm a diehard Patriots fan, and, and we've been very fortunate. But those two Super Bowl losses really uh, cut deep, and I don't think I can forgive them for that, especially the Tyree, David Tyree catch game. Um, I was in college, and I definitely I, I didn't go to class uh, for the next three days. Me and my roommate just uh, – we lived with Giants roommates, diehard Giants roommates from New Jersey, and we came back one day, and they had their parents send them every single newspaper that had the Giants on, and they hung, in, oh. hung them up all over our room when we came back. That's brutal. Uh, from lunch. Yeah, it, it was bad. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of stuck with me. I've always had a bad taste in my mouth for them. How many, how many uh, times, if they threw that pass a thousand times, how many of those do you think David Tyree would have caught? One. One, one time. No, I'm not that talking to you, time. Wolf. I'm talking to Jared. <laughs> I, I know your opinions on this. Um, I, I, would, I would say one. It was no surprise that he was quickly out of the league uh, a, a year after. He has no talent. Yeah, you know, surprisingly, he didn't become the wide receiver one on, on a contender after that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so the Giants, that seems like a pretty clear choice uh, and one a lot of our uh, listeners will be able to relate to. So here's, here's your choices. The first choice, it's a, it's a would you rather. Your first choice is tomorrow you have to get up, get on Twitter, get on Facebook, uh, get on any sort of social media you got, maybe have a, a small press conference, any sort of uh, followers you have, good friends, anything. You have to announce you're denouncing the Patriots and from this day forward, you're going to be a Giants fan. Like that's that's your thing. You are you are a Giants fan from here on in. You're drinking the Kool Aid. It's got to be real too, and it's for life. Like that that's that's the new you. That that's choice number one. Okay. So uh, the other choice is to go stand at the 50 yard line on any sort of football field, and no sort of protection except one of those 1930s leather helmets without a face mask, and you have to stand there and let prime Marshawn Lynch get a 15 yard head start and just plow over you as hard as he can one time you have to take it you can't try to evade the tackle you just have to stand there uh, like a wall and let beast mode run you over one time it's only once but but it's full speed he's not going to take it easy on you that, i mean that's easy for me i i'd, I'd let marshawn have at me uh, <laughs> just, just because that giant thing that that would last my whole entire lifetime uh, whether i break my back or i you know break break a leg or something like that that will heal uh, being a Giants fan for life won't heal, and um, I, I was a slot receiver my whole life. Played a little, little bit in college. Oh, yeah? I used to just uh, weighing 155 pounds in college as a slot receiver. I'm used to getting um, hit pretty good, so uh, okay, I, I definitely go with that one. So you might be overqualified for this, given some of the writers. I mean, honestly, I think I've asked eight guys this, and I think five of them have, have agreed to take the hit. So you're actually in pretty good company. Um, I'm not sure what I would do, but I don't have the same hatred. I think for one specific team that you do for the Giants, which you've come by honestly. All right, so thanks now, for your now, answer. It, it, if you said Ray Lewis in his prime, that might change. Okay, okay. That might change the answer a little bit. Ray mm -hmm. Lewis in his prime. <laughs> oh, jeez, uh, I didn't want you to actually ask that. I was just throwing out another hypothetical. Um, I, I'd still take the hit. Sorry, okay, yeah. I'd, I'd still take the hit. All right, let's move on. That's fair, though. All right, we'll, we will move on from this before I find someone that you wouldn't be willing to take the hit from. All right, go ahead, Wolf. So just the the last um, kind of non-informational question we just want to ask real quick is, are you a fantasy guy yourself? Yeah, I, so I don't like to get caught up in more than two leagues a year. Um, being all my friends and everyone that I know, people always try to get me in the league just because they, they think I know a ton about fantasy. I, I think I'm very well-versed well, well, well versed in fantasy. 
Um, but I, I usually stick to two leagues and, and I'm pretty um, committed to those two leagues. So yeah, I, I've been playing every year since, since I ha- I've had the internet. Any championships? Yeah. Uh, so last year in my, my big league with my friends, I, 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 I was runner up, but I won the last two years before that. And I'm usually in the, in the top three. My downfall is I always, I'm very biased with uh, being an NFL draft guy. I'm very biased with uh, picking rookies. So as you can <laughs> imagine, I had, I had Ezekiel Elliott. I had Mike Thomas. Um, nice. so those guys, those guys helped out a lot. Um, but in, in the past, it's, it's also, uh, kind of been to my downfall too and i always pick patriot players too so it's just that that might uh, skew how good i'm actually doing in the leagues but yeah no, this I'm, is I'm, perfect we got a, a draft expert and a fan it sounds like a, a very solid fantasy guy too so this will be perfect you can give us a really good breakdown of not just the rookies themselves as any any you know draft expert could do but also spin that fantasy angle on them for us so this will be sure. fantastic stuff for all our listeners really looking forward to this sure all right we're gonna start with some of the big name running backs the guys that are being drafted as starters in a lot of leagues, and as the Wolf says, or as the Wolf thinks, deservedly so. Uh, we're going to turn our attention to some of the other rookies who look like they're ready to jump over the current starters by like halfway through the year and maybe could be g- g- like game changers for fantasy owners this season. So we're going to start with the first running back drafted both in real life and in fantasy, and that's Leonard Fournette. Uh, the Jags got him at number four. What do you think of the fit for him in Jacksonville? Um, and if you're willing to stick your neck out, what kind of numbers do you think fantasy owners should uh, maybe be able to expect from him this year? Sure. I, I think it was a, a very safe pick for the Jaguars. I, I, I like the pick a lot. Um, he's an every down, every day, uh, excuse me, every down back. Uh, I, I hope he can stay healthy. That's, that's the one thing I would worry about uh, with, uh, in terms of fantasy is his overall health. If he can, he was pretty, kind of fragile at LSU and heading to le- the next level. People are obviously getting bigger and faster. Um, but the thing is, TJ Yeldon, they're not going it's, it's going to be Fournette getting the ball within the red zone, getting the ball with, inside the 10. So I think his touchdowns are, go- are going to be uh, pretty high. Um, so Fournette, if, I had a, if I'm going to give a, a guess on his numbers, I'll, I'll give him – I think he's got 1,200 yards and maybe, uh, I think, 11 touchdowns. That's, wow. that's going to be my guess. Okay. Just solid, you know, low-end RB1, very high-end RB2 numbers. So are you not worried about Chris Ivory at all at the goal line? Is this going to be any type of committee, or is it the Fournette show there? I I, I think it's going to be Fournette. It, he just, once he proves himself early on um, with a couple of good runs in the, in the red zone. Uh, the people that I've talked to who um, – cover the Jaguars more closely than or know the Jaguars better than I do they, they think they're they're all in on uh, Fournette and uh, he's going to be their guy pending he, he needs, needs to stay healthy so I, I think his t- touchdowns will be pretty high Nice, nice. We've seen some reports, too, that he's actually impressing as a receiver in OTAs. Have you – you said you know some people down in Jacksonville. Does this seem consistent and in, in what you know about him from college? you think – I know that was one of the knocks on him coming in is he's kind of more of a two-down hammer. But is this receiving game being added? Is this something that fantasy owners can expect some even PPR points out of the guy? Uh, I, I would – I actually don't, don't really buy that. I, anyone's going to say that, you know, their back <laughs> is, is looking, be- <laughs> looking better in, in their weak spots. Just like Minnesota Vikings saying, you know, Dalvin Cook looks, you know, looks amazing. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't expect him, if it's a PPR league, I wouldn't expect him to um, be pitching in a ton in terms of um, catches out of the backfield. So, um, you know, the, the, the people I know close to the Jaguars, they cover the Jaguars uh, 24-7. And, and when I've had brief conversations with them, it hasn't, you know, been brought up. So I don't, I don't, I think that might be just kind of smoke. Yeah. I'm with um, you completely. One, <laughs> one guy who who isn't smoke as a receiver, probably one of the best, if not the best receiving back I've ever seen come out is Christian McCaffrey. Um, he's, he's, you know, Roto Street Journal favorite here. Um, the Panthers clearly loved him just as much because they took him eighth overall. And like we were talking about, he's such a good receiver. Many peg him as this third down slot receiver type of guy. Um, we personally feel he'll be used even more extensively than just that. You know, he had a workhorse role in college a bit. What do you kind of see with him and the Panthers? Do you see him doing more than just third down duties? What, what type of expectations do you have for him over in Carolina? Yeah, I, I've, I've been a huge Christian McCaffrey fan for a while and, um, when he showed up at the combine and, and blew everyone 
way, I, it kind of made me look good. So I was pumped about that. Um, I, I had talked to some scouts, a Redskins scout and a actually Patriot scout. And when the Redskins were actually looking at Christian really closely and, and they were hoping that he, he would fall to them. Obviously he didn't, but this, uh, when I was speaking to him, um, he told me that his hands were, were better than 99% of the wide receivers in the draft, just the way he naturally caught the ball and, and mm-hmm. would turn up field with it. So uh, uh, you'll see him in the slot. Uh, you can always guarantee that. I, I, I bet he, he's going to be in the slot more than people think in, in terms, almost like a, an Edelman. And then, uh, you know, you got Johnson Stewart there, and I, I still think he's going to get the majority of the, of the first down runs. But second down, third down, uh, it's going to be a heavy dose of McCaffrey. Um, whether it's you know uh, rushing the ball or, or putting him in the slot, putting him in motion, they're going to get creative with them. So, um, in terms of ceiling, I think his ceiling is much higher than than Fournette. Mm. Um, so it, it's it's going to be exciting to see how that they use him. What do you got for a, a stat line for McCaffrey? If we're going to put you on the line again, oh, that's that's so tough. Um, <laughs> that really is. <laughs> uh, rushing touchdowns, I'll say six. Receiving touchdowns, I'll I'll say four or five, but I think he's going to get a lot of catches where um, Ken Newton's in trouble and, and just d- dumps it off to to McCaffrey mm-hmm. and McCaffrey takes off for thirty yards and then you know that's that's a catch in, in thirty yards. So um, if you, if you're a heavy PPR league or if you're a PPR league, um, then I, I think McCaffrey is is someone you should target. How many catches you think? What, what, catches in total yards. What would you put it at? I have my own projections. I want to see how close I came to the to the expert here. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm an I'm an expert in evaluating the players. I, stat line just get, gets a little difficult. Um, catches. I'll, I'll give them. I, I think 40 catches is is, is safe. And then uh, I mean yardage wise, 500 uh, north of 500. Just receiving uh, or receiving rushing total? Oh, receiving. No, he's talking receiving. catches. Right. That's what yeah. I. That's what I figured. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and, and then and then maybe uh, maybe like eight hundred rushing, but actually maybe even more receiving, but uh, I'll, I'll say eight hundred rushing, six hundred receiving. I mean, and that's I'll, a pretty I'll, damn good season go right there. Fourteen hundred total yards and double digit touchdowns, fifty catches or so, forty catches. Mm-hmm. Might be yeah. four net with those type of numbers. I, I love them too, so I'm with you. It's kind of a debate right now who's the top rookie to take in drafts where most most rookie drafters are going for net. We we totally are right on that fence where we could be swayed on the Christian McCaffrey train and, and it sounds like you might be on that train too, so very interesting um, with that. All right. Well, another guy that a lot of people are crazy about talent-wise is Dalvin Cook, although we really don't like where he landed, I mean, at least from a fantasy perspective. In Minnesota, you got Latavius Murray also signed in the offseason, um, and we don't, yeah. like, we don't like the offensive line at all. Um, but the Wolf throws in, Mike Zimmer ended minicamp by telling reporters that Cook's has a chance to be something special, which I kind of think is similar to when you said, well, what's the coach going to say about like Leonard Fournette's pass catching? Of course he's going to say the guy was, has a chance to be something special. Well, what do you think his prospects are uh, for the Vikings? Yeah, uh, I agree with you guys there that um, I, poor combine showing, people kind of figured out he's not as explosive in, in terms of metrics than, than they actually uh, thought he was. And Latavius Murray, uh, he had a pretty good season last year with the Raiders. I think he's going to get um, a bulk of those red zone, um, those red zone carries at least in the beginning. So I mean, uh, Cook, I, I'm, I'm not, a, I, I'm not as sold. I, I even think Mixon's going to have a better year than him. I, I think Cook uh, might be good for you know four or five touchdowns, uh, 500 yards. Uh, but I, I still think. Um, Murray's proven um, he's he's a bigger back. I think they'll they'll use him closer in the red zone. So, it, I mean, Devin Cook can catch, so he, he might be able to make up a little ground there. But I'm not as high at, uh, in the fantasy world as Devin Cook as, as uh, even remotely close to to Fournette or McCaffrey. Yeah, we we feel very similar. We have him at RB35. The experts have him at RB26, which I think is way too high. They have him over certain guys. I think Mixon's just right around where where Cook's going, and we like Mixon a lot more. Um, you know, picked a 
number 48. And right now we saw like Gio Bernard is out. So Mixon getting a lot of the receiving work. Uh, Jeremy Hill's still there too, though. So what do you see this backfield shaking out as? And, and how do you see Mixon? What type of numbers do you see out of Mixon in there? So, I mean, Mixon, the people I talked to Mixon going in, into into the draft, uh, people, majority of, of the scouts that I spoke to thought that he had cleaned up his act. And, mm. you know, it was obviously what he did was, was terribly wrong, but he kind of had his head on straight. He knew that it was, he was down to his last chance. And he, and he slid because uh, no team really wanted that, that PR nightmare, but the Bengals, you know, they have Adam Jones on the team. What, 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 how worse could he get? So right. I, 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 I think Mixon is actually going to be a, a solid fit there. Um, Jeremy Hill is, isn't is exciting to me. I, I think uh, Mixon's going to be the one breaking those, those long runs. I think you'll see a bunch of those this year. Uh, Jeremy Hill might eat up some of his the easy touchdowns in the red zone. But I still, in terms of fantasy backs, Mixon is, is safe at, at number three. Uh, mm. numbers, numbers, wives, numbers wise, maybe... You know, six rushing touchdowns, uh, a, a couple receiving touchdowns, I, I think is, is a safe bet for him. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, we're going to talk about a couple sleeper backs now. I hate the word sleeper when we talk about fantasy. I feel like that's kind of overplayed, but we're, we're going to use it sure. for this purpose anyway. Um, and these are the criteria we're using. Uh, these guys play behind a starter that we think they could beat out potentially uh, during the course of the season. And they're in systems or situations that could produce some, some real uh, output stat-wise as the seasons go on. So the first one we wanted to bring up was Joe Williams, who the Wolf was extremely high on. Uh, we had a 49ers beat reporter on who, um, you know, was also high on him, maybe not as high as the Wolf, but but said a lot of great things about this guy. Um, we just think with, with Shanahan's offense, he could be a great fit. Um, he was handpicked for the system, et cetera, et cetera. Do you love Joe Mel- Williams, too? Uh, do you think possibly we're getting a little ahead of ourselves? Um, I wouldn't say I, I, I love him. I, I think he is a pretty good all-around back, doesn't, doesn't really – stand out or didn't really stand out for me in, in overall in, in any of his attributes um sleeper wise i i wouldn't go with him i i think i mean the, the 49ers in terms of talent wise he, he has a chance to, to see a lot of playing time but um i i'm not as high as on him on on some other people so i would if, if i had to get predictions again maybe maybe a couple touchdowns for him um, but no, I just, I, I was never really high on him. Yeah. For me, it's more, uh, I don't know if I'm necessarily high on him as a talent. I don't know the rookies too well, which is why I love talking to guys like you. I'm sure. more high on Kyle Shanahan. I love the system. I love the fact that this was the guy he was like, we got to trade up. We got to get him. He sees something in him. He did that with like Steve Slayton and Alfred Morris. So I'm more high on the Shanahan going for him, not necessarily Williams himself. So we'll see if he ends up actually panning out or not. Um, but what about, it's kind of interesting. Like we, we talked about the big four and then it's who should be the number five rookie running back off the list could it be kareem hunt we see him you know it was spencer Ware, a guy that's pretty solid but not spectacular anywhere and you know kareem hunt comes in and, and seems like he might be a good fit for andy reed's offense what do you think about kareem hunt yeah i, I like kareem hunt a, a, a lot um didn't have crazy numbers when uh he was in college and obviously he didn't he didn't play um at the uh, power five level um i, I think he's a, all around solid back and Obviously, Spencer Ware isn't isn't anything that's going to. He's not going to kind of halt uh, Hunt from from potentially overtaking him there. So I think he has a good chance of actually putting up some surprising numbers, like you said. Uh, one back that I, that I think has a chance to um, actually put up great numbers and um, not. And I, I've listened to a few fantasy things and uh, I've been reading about it, is uh, Deontay Foreman uh, for the Texans. I, I know they have Lamar. Lamar Miller there, but when I when I was watching film, um, one thing you saw about Foreman a lot was he's a big back. He's almost he's about 245 pounds, and he was out running cornerbacks, and, and he proved that at the combine. He ran much faster than everyone thought. I think he's going he's going to be the one for the Texans that is going to be getting um, those looks in the red zone. I, I don't think Lamar Miller is he's more of a east to west uh, type runner, and and Foreman can go hit the hole hard and, and get those tough yards. So there's someone that I don't hear a lot of people talking about that 
uh, could be a nice a nice take uh, later on in your fantasy draft. The Wolves really years just really, me. really, the, his antennas just really went up there. I could tell that, that was that, a piece that, of information that, that interested you a lot. Really interesting uh, because not necessarily four minutes, which if he's a touchdown guy, that's really interesting, but more Lamar Miller. If right. the touchdowns are getting stolen, if he's got a vulture, that, that's really going to hurt his value. So that's really good stuff. That, Like you mentioned, people aren't really talking about this Foreman guy much in the fantasy community. I've barely heard about him, and, and I read pretty much everything that's out there. So that's really good insight to know that there might be a potential vulture there on the way for Lamar Miller. So I'm yeah, glad you unearthed that one. I, I would wow. say go to go to YouTube, uh, watch Foreman's highlights, and and you'll see he's he's powerful. Uh, he, he's a, he's a huge back. He's almost two hundred fifty pounds, and he, he's running um, four fives. So, uh, I think he actually ran. Uh, I don't have numbers in front of me below a four five. Um, Jeez. And uh, and he's. I, I thought even during the draft, not a lot of people were talking about him. He ended up going, I think, in the third round. Um, but he, he's someone that to keep your eye on, and and if if no one else is hearing about him, you're going to be able to get him later on in the draft, and maybe sit him on the bench for for a little bit. But um, you'll you'll see him popping up. Oh man, we, we're yeah, going to have to really keep good. this podcast to ourselves, Wolf. Keep that under wraps Seriously? until Seriously. after our draft. <laughs> one name we have talked a lot about um, is Samaje Perine because. Um, we, we feel like there's just tons of touchdowns potentially up for grabs in Washington with a pretty explosive offense, Kirk Cousins, well beyond, beyond the, uh, the average QB. And Rob Kelly just kind of a, a plotter really in his way. Nothing too special about Rob Kelly. What do you think about Samaj Perrin? What did you see on tape? What are, your, what are your thoughts on him? And do you think this is a job he could take? Um, not a huge Perrin fan. I, I think I, he's a bigger back again. Um, kind of clunky. Yeah, he, he he's tough to bring down, um, but uh, if anything, the only time he's going to be getting good fantasy points is is within the Ted yard line. He's not going to be breaking anything crazy. Um, mm. I, I was never that high on him. I, I just didn't think he he hit the hit the holes hard enough. Um, and it, he's just kind of it's kind of weird saying, but he's just kind of a, a clunky back overall, almost a, a little robotic to me. So not as high as him as as you might have heard from others. Interesting. So clunky, not not the word you want to describe your running back. It goes well with plotter, though. So maybe this is yeah, just yet another plotter in their state. No, we appreciate getting the straight scoop. That's that's interesting, that's too. All right, last that's team. Awesome. Go ahead. Um, there's only really no, no. Two, more, two more backfields I want to look at. And one we didn't have on the script, but he's been popping up a little bit more, is Alvin Kamara with the Saints. As potentially their, their Darren Sproles kind of guy. At first, he wasn't really on my radar because they have Ingram, and then they had Adrian Peterson. I just figured they're just going to rest this guy behind them and let him groom. But it sounds like they're really preparing this guy for that, that receiving back role that's been so valuable in New Orleans. Is this a guy that you see fitting that role? Or what do you know about Alvin Kamara? Yeah, um, he was underutilized at, at Tennessee, and he definitely has uh, a ton of a ton of skills you look for. Very dynamic back. Um, he, he's, a, he's a playmaker. Uh, Darren Sproles comparison. I don't think he's going. He, I don't think he has the hands like Sproles has. I don't think he's going to be able to you know find the space and, and get those catches like Darren Sproles did, did in the past. Um, but he's going to be their third third uh, third down option. Um, obviously Ingram first and second, but um, I, I I think he's he's a good pick if you can get him later on. Um, I I just wouldn't expect anything super impressive out of him. Um, I, I still think he might have a few more years to actually really develop. Okay. All right, and Let, go ahead. I was just gonna say the last the last backfield that we saw that could potentially have some rookies taken over was in Green Bay, where Montgomery, a converted receiver, is the the main guy. Is there any chance that Jamal Williams, Aaron Jones, Devonta Mays, any of these three guys? They took three guys, which means they're, they're at least uncomfortable with Ty Montgomery as the guy. Do you see any of those three pushing for a starting job, or is this going to be Montgomery's job all year? Um, so, what I had the, I, I interviewed Aaron Jones, and and he was I liked him a lot, and and I don't think a, a lot of people didn't get to see him on the main stage. He's he's super athletic. Um, he had, if you actually broke down on the numbers, he had one of the better combines out of any of the running backs. So I, I think uh, he's a home run hitter, and you're going to see some big runs out of him. And then um, you know J- Jamal Williams is, is more of that bigger back who's going to is going to gobble up the uh, you know the first and second down carries. So I, it's going to the way I see it shaking out is a running back 
uh, by committee because Aaron Jones is not an everyday. Uh, he's five eight. He's not an uh, and I think it's like almost two hundred pounds. So he's not an every down type back. So it's going to be uh, they're going to spread it around there in terms of carries. So uh, looking at it fancy wise, I don't know how that play. It doesn't play favorably, but uh, you'll see a few big runs from Aaron Jones and, and Jamal Williams. Might get a couple of garbage touchdowns, four or five garbage touchdowns, uh, tops. Very interesting. All righty. Is there anyone we, we haven't talked about that should be mentioned, or is that wrap up pretty much all the important names? Uh, in, in terms of running backs, um, someone who's really interesting, I, I know the Bears have Jordan Howard, but uh, Tariq Cohen from North Carolina AT, he's, he's a small guy, 5'6". But um, he's gonna get he's gonna get the ball. He, he reminds me a lot of a Darren Sproles. If, if once mm-hmm. again, if you go in and look at his YouTube, um, he is super dynamic, uh, uh, just super shifty. You'll you'll look at him and you'll be like Darren Sproles. The, the the question is, will the Bears use him like that, or is he just going to um, come out every once in a while on, on third down? Because he's, he's not much of a blocking back. Um, the only thing he really can do is is those outside runs. Um, so he's he's an interesting guy. Um, I would watch him. Um, other than that, off the top of my head, I, I think Foreman was was my guy that yeah. that was really interesting to me because, like like you said, I hadn't heard a peep about him or anyone saying that he was going to potentially put up some good numbers. But um, like I said, uh, Lamar Miller is pretty he's pretty fragile too. So th- th- there's a chance where where uh, Foreman's going going to be the guy there. Um, and if not, he's going to get a lot of looks, especially in the road zone. That's awesome. Fantastic. Man, thanks a lot for all this, Jared. I can tell you, um, not only do we really appreciate the insight on these rookies, but literally because of you, I'm going to change my hypothetical to include Ray Lewis instead of Marshawn Lynch moving forward. I, I, it just I, makes sense. I was I was trying to think in terms of, of pain, what would hurt more. And I was like, you know what, Let Ray Lewis makes me scared a little, a little bit more that I almost went the other way, but... I'd still take that hit from Ray Lewis. No, sure. but you're, you're totally right. Even me <laughs> just sitting here thinking right now, who am I more scared of? I'm way more scared of Ray Lewis. And, and you, you have improved the hypothetical question moving forward. So I also thank you for that. Thanks a lot for your time, man. Absolutely. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, thanks again, man. So many valuable nuggets to come out of this interview. It is fantastic. Really appreciate the time. For sure. Let's hope they shake out the way I said it. Uh, and if they don't. <laughs> Uh, I'll make sure to block you guys. <laughs> We'd love Perfect. to have sounds you back good, in a couple Jay. months if you're willing so we can talk about it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, sounds good, guys. Later. All right, see you later, man.